There are a lot of well-regarded classic fantasy films from the 1980s, including the likes of Willow, Kroll, Legend, Beastmaster, among others. However, there is one film that I believe stands with those and yet continually gets neglected by the masses. That film is Masters of the Universe from 1987, starring Dolph Lundgren. That's right, the live-action film based off of the He-Man cartoon and the toy line from Mattel. Full disclosure, I had a huge collection of those He-Man toys as a child, and I still have them. I watched the cartoon. Though I was three years old when the movie came out, I am currently a huge fan of Dolph Lundgren today. You might even say that I'm a super fan. I enjoy all of his classic films he starred in, such as Rocky IV, I Come in Peace, Showdown in Little Tokyo, The Punisher, Universal Soldier, and I even own a lot of the later direct-to-video stuff he's been in, with the best being maybe Command Performance, which he also directed. This was the second acting performance Dolph had ever had, and he's not the highlight here. It is still a bit difficult for me to give a completely unbiased opinion on this film, but nevertheless, I think there's a strong case for Masters of the Universe being a completely underrated 80s sci-fi and fantasy classic. Masters of the Universe is pure 80s nostalgia for me. When it hit theaters, it was being called the Star Wars of the 80s, which is a pretty poor comparison, honestly. Skeletor's soldiers may have had Stormtrooper-like armor, but really it was nothing like Star Wars. Besides having similar characters and locations such as Castle Grayskull, the film wasn't trying to be a direct adaptation of the 80s cartoon of the same name either. It's all loosely connected. For example, the wizard Orko was replaced by a dwarven inventor named Gwildor. I don't want to completely spoil the storyline for anyone who hasn't seen it, but to summarize briefly, the film actually starts out with Skeletor having just defeated He-Man and overtaken Castle Grayskull. He has captured the sorceress and is being well on his way to become master of the universe. Talk about bleak and totally the opposite of what you'd expect for a film based on the property. An artifact called the Cosmic Key introduced in the beginning of the movie allows He-Man and his allies to escape Castle Grayskull, which is now overrun by Skeletor's forces. They are unintentionally transported to a world called Earth, where they eventually meet two human characters, Kevin and Julie played by Courtney Cox and Tom Paris from Star Trek Voyager fame. Skeletor then sends his curious quartet, his four finest warriors, along with the amazing Evil Inn, to Earth to retrieve the key. Meg Foster as Evil Inn with those eyes is perfect for the role in my opinion. But the actor who really steals the show and is by far the major highlight of the movie is Frank Langella and his performance as Skeletor. I would say that he's one of the best fantasy villains of all time. You really can't compare him to the cartoon version, though I enjoy that one as well. Throughout the entire film, Skeletor is over the top, theatrical, and gives off a real Shakespearean vibe with his line delivery. The dialogue is well-crafted and intense. Particularly, his lengthy monologue at the climax of the movie before the final battle is a must watch. The actor has since stated that this is one of his favorite roles and I can definitely understand why. For being one of the last major films to be put out by canon, Masters of the Universe had an extremely low budget and you can definitely tell that corners were cut in its production. Most of the film's sets weren't extremely notable, however, they did make use of some really amazing matte paintings to flesh out the world of Eternia. I think the production value gives the film a bit of an added charm compared to the more CGI films of modern day. In fact, there's only just one special effect in the movie that wasn't done in camera. The final fight between He-Man and Skeletor was almost not even finished. 
as they barely got it done before filming was halted, and you can tell that it was very rushed. Without spoiling the end of the movie, I will say that it had a very feel-good ending. I've seen this movie countless times over the years, and I honestly don't have many negative things to say about it. There are already enough negative reviews online if you search for them. Sure, it would have been cool if the film only took place in Eternia, but this is definitely a product of its time, a product of the 80s. I can understand that it's not a film for everyone, but for me, it's very memorable and very quotable. I have a lot of the dialogue ingrained to my memory at this point. The He-Man victory line, Skeletor's speech to the sorceress. If you've never seen it before, just go see it immediately and enjoy. And remember, it's not goodbye. It's good journey.